Genesis, the first book of the Bible, is an appropriate place to begin learning about Christianity. It stands to reason that if you can believe these stories, the rest of the Bible is quite easy to accept. For example, if you can accept that Adam looked for a mate among the animals, and that Eve was made from a rib, or that talking snakes have more insight than people, if you can believe in magical trees, and that God preferred that people be naked around him without them knowing they were naked, then you certainly can accept the idea of the flood and Noah's Ark. You see, where logic fails, magical thinking prevails. However, upon closer inspection, the story of Noah has a couple of problems that can't be fixed by magic. Problem number one, God's regret. Regret is a negative conscious and emotional reaction to personal past acts and behaviors. Regret is often a feeling of sadness or shame, embarrassment or annoyance or guilt. After one acts in a manner and later wishes not to have done so, now, being all-knowing, God knew in advance all that would happen. God, as he is described, cannot regret anything. Being all-powerful, he could have created any number of scenarios to avoid his regretful decision to create people. Now, after the flood, Noah settled down and built a vineyard. Noah knew that God liked to watch naked people. So, being the best person ever, he decided to get drunk and naked. Then Noah took a nap. His son Ham happened to see Noah naked in his tent and told his brothers about it. The brothers covered the drunken naked Noah by walking into the tent backwards with a blanket so they wouldn't have to see their drunk and naked father. When Noah realized what was happening, he reacted the way any normal best person in the world would. He blamed his grandson Canaan and cursed him into slavery. And that's how slavery happened. The moral of the story is this, if you do something you later regret, punish someone else by killing them or making them into a slave.